you guys on today's episode of I don't know how to film a cooking tutorial, but I'm going to try anyway. You are going to see how I made this stuffed acorn squash. It is uh, dairy free and meat free, but it's technically not vegan. And I kind of explain that as I cook it um, and some of the steps that you can make it truly vegan if you would like. Uh, but this is just kind of a recipe that I had a couple things in my pantry. Acorn squash looked good at the store. I like acorn squash, but I don't eat it that often. And so I thought, let me kind of put some pieces together and create a nice fall slash winter hearty meal. Um, and so I came up with this recipe a couple weeks ago and thought I would share it with you guys. I know the last cook with me video, they were like, it's kind of crazy. You don't really give a tutorial. So let me know what you guys think of this one. I tried to break it out step by step a little bit more and uh, give you some more instructions on how I actually created this. So let's start cooking. Here's just a quick span of the ingredients we're gonna use today. We've got some rice, mushroom, onion, walnuts, some different fresh spices, some mushroom soup, chicken broth, olive oil, Worcestershire sauce, and then some more spices. And then our star here, which is a butternut or an acorn squash. And so I am going to show you how I put all of this together into a fall, winter, hearty dinner that's also dairy free. Okay, first we're gonna prep our squash. So I've already cut it and we're just gonna pop it on a tray. And we're gonna take a little bit of olive oil, drizzle that on there. And then we're gonna take a little salt. And a little pepper. And then we're gonna go stick it in a 400 degree oven and let it do its thing. So we're gonna start a couple things here at the same time. We're gonna start both the filling, but then we also need the rice to cook. So in this pot over here, I'm just gonna cook some rice on the stove. And instead of adding water to the rice, I'm gonna add chicken broth in there. And then here we're gonna to saute up our vegetables and get that all ready. We got the rice on. Now we're gonna take our onion. And I just have some white onion here. And we're gonna add that. Actually, I think it's a yellow sweet onion. And we're gonna cook that on medium. So normally I would add garlic to this, some fresh chopped up garlic. However, went into the fridge today, saw that the garlic was uh, kind of moldy and gross. So with the normal olive oil I'm cooking the onion in, I'm gonna add some of this. It's like a garlic infused olive oil, but it's very strong. So for the most part, I'm using just regular uh, extra virgin olive oil in here. And we'll just do a little bit of that. So we have some of the garlic flavor, but not overpowering. And then I'm also gonna use uh, some spices. So as this cooks, we'll do little coarse ground black pepper, little garlic powder, and we'll taste this as we go and we'll adjust. I will do a little sea salt, uh, just a little onion powder. And we do have some fresh herbs in here too, but I am going to add um, just a little bit of dried thyme. This has become one of my favorite seasonings lately and I feel like it's very fall winter flavor. So we're going to put that in there and let that cook down. So our onions have reduced down a little bit and now we are going to add some baby bella or cremini mushrooms. And if you would have asked me even probably oh two years ago if I would be cooking something willingly with mushrooms and this must have much mushrooms in it I would probably tell you you are crazy. For whatever reason, I have found a love for mushrooms and I don't know where that came from, just all of a sudden thought, hmm, I'm gonna cook with mushrooms and I really enjoy them. So you never know until you try it, you know, a couple years after you think they're the most horrible thing in the world. While that does it though, I'm also gonna add in, let's see if I can get this to focus. I just have a little bit of rosemary, sage, and thyme in here, and I have a little uh, fresh pack from the store. Not that much, but a little bit of a fresh herb adds a lot of flavor, and so we're going to let that 
warm up in the pan too and let some of those oils out. So the first time I made this, I thought, you know, we've got sauteed vegetables, we have rice, we have the squash that's kind of soft, and I wanted a crunch to it. And the only thing I could really think of and had on hand um, were some chopped walnuts. And so um, at this point, you know, we've kind of cooked our vegetables down. I'm just going to toast these in the bottom of the pan as these cook down a little bit more. And it's going to give a nice crunch to the dish and also a nice... Um, kind of earthy flavor to it as well. So before we add any liquids to this, we're just gonna let them toast up. And it doesn't take long. It just takes a couple minutes to, and they don't even really change color. Just toast them up, kind of incorporates them into everything else. And then we'll start making the sauce that uh, will end up being the stuffing for the squash. Okay, so our walnuts are a little toasted. Uh, we're gonna kind of, make a sauce now. So how I usually cook or when I come up with these random recipes, I guess, is, you know, I saute all the vegetables and I think, well, the rice isn't done yet. I need to do something in the meantime. Um, but then I got to thinking too, I didn't want it to just be rice and mushrooms and onions. I kind of wanted it to incorporate. And by doing so, you're gonna be able to mix it in better with the rice when you stuff it into your squash. So in this pan, we're just going to add a couple things to kind of make it more of a liquid base before we add our rice. So the bubbly first thing is I just added some white wine. Uh, this is a sweeter wine, but a dry white wine would work. And we're just going to let that cook down. I mean, we're talking like a tablespoon or two. To add kind of more of like that umami flavor, I didn't want to use soy sauce, so instead I'm going to use some Worcestershire sauce, but you could use soy sauce if you wanted to make this vegan. You would just not use the chicken broth in the rice. You could do water or vegetable broth and then use soy sauce instead of this Worcestershire sauce. And kind of a, a glug glug of that. Technical term measurement. And then we're going to let this Cook down a little bit. And then my secret ingredient is this mushroom soup. It's a creamy mushroom soup that's dairy free. Um, I guess you could probably use any other type of soup or even like a cream of mushroom soup, I guess, if you were um, wanting to make this with dairy. Uh, but that has dairy in it, so we're using this soup. And I use this in like chicken fried rice, I use this in um, anything that I want a more rich flavor without using a lot of ingredients or without dairy. Um, highly recommend. I find this at like Kroger, uh, H-E-B stores, that type of thing. Stir this all up and then uh, reduce this. We just kind of want it to thicken a little bit so that when we add the rice in, it's ready for it. Um, when I add the rice, if it's maybe not enough sauce, I have the leftover can of uh, reduced salt chicken broth here that I will add to it if I need to. Checked on our squash, we're not quite there yet. It needs a couple more minutes, but the rice is ready. So I've got our steamed cooked white rice with chicken broth instead of water. And we're just gonna add that to, I guess it's like a mushroom gravy, I guess. We'll see, whatever you wanna call it. <clears throat> And then we're just going to mix this together. And the last thing that we're going to mix to the filling is we're actually going to take some of the acorn squash out once it is fork tender. And we're going to mix that in here and then put it back in the oven for just a little bit so that we can kind of uh, let it cook back in the shell, make sure it's all nice and hot. But other than that, this is pretty much it. Um, I don't think I need to add any chicken broth. It's nice and, um, or it's not too dry. We should be good. So I'm just gonna let this continue to cook while we wait about five more minutes or so for the squash and we'll finish it up. So I didn't wanna burn myself and it was getting to that point. So I just went ahead and I scooped out only half of the acorn squash and I'll show you at the end why I only did half. Um, this will probably be more filling than that one half can fit. But with the other half, I'll show you what I do. I kind of get dinner and dessert 
in one acorn squash. So we're just going to mix this in and kind of thicken up our filling. And then I'm going to put as much as this would fit in half of an acorn squash back in the oven. Let it cook up a little bit and then I'll show you the end result. Okay, so I know it doesn't look that appealing and I have my camera angle weird. Um, the only thing I did extra was I did put a couple extra walnuts on. And again, I like that crunch that you get with it. Um, and it kind of, when you put it back in the oven, it kind of thickens it up. It's not very pretty to look at, uh, but if you do try this, let me know. Um, the bearded one tried it a little bit ago and he said it was uh, savory and good, but it's not his cup of tea. He's more of a meat type of person and all the cheese. So this I think is a good dairy free option. And again, you can make this uh, truly vegan if you wanted to with some of the suggestions I made earlier with either water or vegetable broth instead of the chicken broth and no Worcestershire sauce or uh, you could sub some soy sauce for that. So thank you guys and I hope you enjoy this video. Just slide. I told you I t was gonna show you what I do with the other half of the squash. So. I knew I couldn't or didn't want to eat a full squash with the savory stuff. So when I finished the savory squash by putting it back in the oven with the filling in it, on the other half, I took a little bit of butter, in this case, a dairy-free butter alternative, and I put a little bit of butter in this half of the squash. And then I put some of this maple syrup, which, in my opinion is one of the best one. It's like a bourbon barrel aged maple syrup. Put a little bit of that in there and then let it cook until it's, I would say, I don't know, mushy is not a pleasant word, but so that it's mushy and then you get dinner and dessert. And um, this is the main reason I bought the acorn squash the first time I cooked it, but figured I don't need to be eating a full maple syrup filled butternut squash. But just another idea of how to use it if you didn't want to use the full squash for your dinner. You can cook this up. You can use brown sugar too, but this maple syrup's got kind of a smoky flavor to it that is delicious.